So right now I'm scanning the uh, the bottom side, and it's got its own. See, I looked away for just a second. That's what I'm talking about right there. I looked away for just a second. If you're using this thing, get used to hearing that noise. Or, um, you can always just mute that. But all of these little crevices and lobes and joints and sockets and all of these little bones that spend all their time rubbing up against other bones. You want to get them from as many different angles as you can. And see how as I pull back further away, sometimes I get more details. There may be, the scanner may be scanning fine and recording a lot of data. But there may be details that you're looking for that are outside of its optimal range. So you'll want to push the scanner closer and pull it further away to get different details. Like I can, I can see holes in the data that it's collected and I can tell that things like the, the back sides of the teeth haven't been scanned, at least in this year. I lost tracking for just a second but was able to get it back. And it's always, how do I set this thing up <laughs> so I can get to it? What makes deer skulls really hard is that the, um, the antlers are so solid compared to the rest of the skull. So that the center of gravity is kind of up here amongst the, uh, the antlers. And they have a tendency to fall off the platform and fall off the table and shatter. So the back side of that sinus cavity is another thing that I know I'm not going to get all the way down, but I want to get as deep as I can. And that usually requires looking at it from several different angles. Also, make, try and get as far inside that orbital cavity as I can get. I can see there's a, I know there's a piece of bone across the top of the eye socket that's going to be really hard to get. Over the course of doing these scans, you'll get the same piece of geometry several times and that's okay in fact I, I want a lot of overlapping geometry because oh there we go that's the bone I was trying to get overlapping geometry makes it easier for the software to register the final mesh and by registration I mean there's a there's a process it's an algorithm that it goes through where it looks at you know large chunks of data, subsequent data sets, and tries to find coincident points in different data sets. So if it recognizes a feature in one image, for instance, and then it recognizes the same feature in another image, and it recognizes them both to the point that it can tell that it recognizes them both and that they're the same thing, then that really aids it in um, stitching the whole thing together. Now, another really good feature about scanning something like this is, let's say I, uh, I spend an hour or so capturing data. And then I uh, go back and build my model from that data, and I notice that there's holes that I missed. Well, I can always just pick the scanner back up, scan the sections that I know I missed, and then merge that back into... Uh, my working model. So believe it or not this mess is a deer skull. Um, every time the scanner scans something it doesn't know where it is in relation to the previous scan. Uh, I can't tell if I've turned it over or if I've turned the skull around. So every time it does a new scan uh, the data is based off of the first frame that it grabs. So when I'm initially done with the scan you get this big sea urchin looking thing or 
Maybe it's more like a tumbleweed. I can't really tell. It's very abstract. But this is the data for our skull. Now we're going to go through the process of cleaning this up a little bit and aligning the different meshes together. Uh, if I separate some of these over here, and I'm just going to look at these one at a time. So that's at least recognizable as being a skull. You can see I got part of my finger in it. And then it got a lot of this tray. So this is the stuff that we're going to clean out. The process is going to be that we're going to go through these scans. We're going to look for the frames that have failed. Um, and we're going to re try and reduce these numbers over here to improve our quality of our data. Then we're going to erase the extra stuff that's not skull, like my fingers or this tray the skull was sitting on. And then we'll align all the meshes together. And then we'll actually produce an actual mesh. So we're still in the process of working with the raw data. So I'm going to go over here and click on the editor button. One thing about the software, all the tools are laid out in sort of a logical pattern. So like these, these buttons over here off the side, we're going to use them more or less in the order that they're listed here. And then inside things like the tools, these different registration uh, procedures, we'll use them pretty much in the order that they're listed here. So the workflow in the software, at least, is really straightforward. So I'm going to come back over here to the editor. And I've only got this one scan visible. If I turn on the visibility of the other scans, not only is it still a kludgy mess, but if I do any kind of erasing or moving around or modifying of the data, it's going to apply that change to everything that's visible. For, so for at least this process, um, we want to look at each one of these scans individually. So I can rotate the scan around and then click on this erase button. And then with the uh, 2D selection, it just gives me this sort of paintbrush that I can paint over the things that I want to select. And I'm just dragging the view around with the left click of the mouse and paint over that stuff. So my hand in the tray should be the only thing that I've selected for being erased. And now it's gone. And I go to the next one and do the same sort of process. Tilt it around until I can see what's tray, what's skull. And this stuff down here is everything I want to get rid of. And the only thing that's left is skull data. There's still a lot of garbage data floating around in space. And these are just artifacts from... Um, when the scanner is just wrong. And you'll also look at, you'll see some of these little spiky artifacts on the surface. That's okay. We'll, um, we'll work those out. And that's one of the reasons uh, I say that the more data that you get for a surface, the better it is. Because it's actually going to do some sort of statistical analysis and figure out which of these spikes are actual spikes and which of these spikes are not supposed to be there. And it'll um, sort of filter all that stuff out. So this process can actually go on for a while, depending on how many scans you have. Um, looks like I've got a dozen and some change scans to go through. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and do them all, this process to all of them. And uh, through the magic of video editing, you will be none the wiser. Okay, so we're, we're done with that process. I've erased pretty much everything that's not deer skull from the scan. It still looks like a jumbled mess. We're just about ready to start the process of aligning the different, um, the different data sets together. I'm going through and I'm toggling the visibility of all but one of them because there's one thing I want to show you before that process. Okay, so scan number six here. When scan number six happened, um, you see how it sort of got looks like it's almost got two noses here. So on this one, as I was up here trying to get the uh, the uh, orbital cavity, I lost tracking, and then when it reacquired tracking, it was wrong. So it kept scanning the sinus cavity or the nose, and you can see that this this piece of data down here because it's still not a mesh yet looks an awful lot like this piece over here. So it was scanning what it thinks is accurate information, and there may be a lot of good accurate data in that. It's just aligned wrong with the rest of the data set. 
So there's a thing that we can do that we can we can fix this. So I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit and go to something that I would normally save for later on in this process. And I'm going to do this just on this one selected scan. And it's going to be, uh, first thing I'm going to do is a rough serial registration. And what this does, as opposed to other types of registration that I'll talk about more in depth in a little bit, it goes through each frame of data and tries to figure out if each individual frame of data is in the right place. And you see how it very quickly lined up the two noses in the data set. So now the second nose that was oriented wrong when I reacquired tracking is now back in the right place. So things that come out looking just horribly grotesque, like, oh, it looks like it did the right data, but it's pointed in completely in the wrong direction. Uh, you can fix that with a uh, rough serial registration. It also exposed some more of the tray that I couldn't get to when the nose was in the wrong place. And uh, now I can go back in there and clean that up a little bit more. So we'll start the alignment process here.